Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, tendons, bursae, synovial sheaths, cartilages, bones, bone marrow, periosteum, joints, and serous membranes. Today, it's time to talk about dermatomes and myotomes. What does derma mean? It means skin. What does myo mean? Muscle. How about tome? Well, what does the word anatomy mean? Because it also has tomi in it. Tome means to cut and ana means up. So anatomy literally means to cut you up. So dermatome is a slice of skin. Myotome, a slice muscle. What does that mean? It means your skin supplied by a slice, i.e. a spinal segment of your spinal cord, and the group of muscles supplied by a slice, i.e. a segment of your spinal cord. This is my anatomy playlist. Please watch the videos in the series in order. But first, the embryology. What's an embryo between fertilization and eight weeks gestation? Fertilization, and then you are a zygote, just one cell, and then morula, and then blastula, and then implantation, hopefully, into the postero superior aspect of the uterus near the fundus. Then bilaminar embryo, two layers, and then the famous trilaminar embryo, three layers. Here is the bilaminar, please pause and review, and here is the trilaminar laminar, endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. The ectoderm is on the outside, giving me the epidermis of my skin, as well as the nervous system. How about the endoderm? It's on the inside, giving you all the viscera, digestive system, respiratory system, epithelium of the heart, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, tonsils, thymus, thyroid, parathyroid, etc. How about the mesoderm? Meso means in the middle. That's why we have the mesencephalon, which is your midbrain, in the middle. This will give me bones and cartilage muscles and tendons and ligaments, blood and lymph, kidney, ureter. You told me that the epidermis came from the ectoderm. How about the dermis then? It's here. Since it's under the ecto, it's gonna be meso. Dermis is here. But hemolycosis, the spleen is part of the viscera. Why didn't it come from the endoderm? Because your spleen is a blood organ. It's also a lymph organ. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Haven't we discussed the spleen in hematology and oncology? So whenever you hear the word meso or mesen or mesenchymal or mesen whatever, we are referring to the mesoderm. Here is the lovely mesoderm, which is divided into paraaxial mesoderm, just near the midline or near the axis, and then we have lateral plate mesoderm, way lateral over there. And in between, we have the intermediate mesoderm. The paraaxia will be invaginated by the lateral plate to give us some doozy things called somites. Pieces of soma, pieces of flesh. What's in the flesh? Muscle. And muscles are attached to what? They are attached to bones. Muscles are covered with what? Skin. Oh, sclerotome and dermomyotome. Love it. So skin and muscles? Yeah. Can we divide that? Can we get more organized? Dermatome and myotome. The dermatome is for the dermis because it comes from the mesoderm. And the myotome, well, that's for muscles. Who's going to innervate those muscles? Well, spinal nerves do. Oh, got you. Is it the ventral ramus or the dorsal ramus? Well, it depends. If you're talking about the muscles of your back, that's, of course, dorsal ramus. But if you're talking about the muscles of your belly, the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, anterior pelvic wall, and basically most of the muscles, ventral ramus. Can we make it more organized? Yes, of course. Here's the mesoderm, paraaxial mesoderm, intermediate mesoderm, and lateral plate mesoderm. The paraaxial will give us somites, and then sclerotome for bone and cartilage. Sclerus means a rock, hard stuff. Then the dermomyotome. Laterally, the dermatome for your dermis and the immediately myotoma for muscles. The muscles in the dorsum, i.e. on your back, are supplied by the dorsal ramus, and the muscles on your ventral or anterior abdominal wall are supplied by ventral ramus. See, this is half of embryology in just one slide. That's the medicosis way. Remember your nervous system? Yeah, it came from the neuroectoderm. Genius. CNS and PNS, central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, peripheral nervous system, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. And of course, you remember, here is C1, C2, C3, C4, etc. What's that? Spinal segment in my spinal cord, part of the central nervous system. Out of this spinal segment, who's gonna leave? A spinal nerve. 
So this is also spinal nerve number C3. And this is spinal segment number C3. Let's do it again. Here is C3 as a spinal segment. We're still part of the CNS. And then as we exit, we become spinal nerve. Now it's part of the PNS. All of the skin supplied by the sensory branches of this nerve will be called dermatome. And all of the muscles supplied by the motor branch of this nerve will be called what? Myotome. Here is my spinal segment, beautiful. Look at this, efferent, which is anterior, is motor. But the afferent, which is posterior, is sensory. Dermatome, myotome segmental innervation of your skin. Your skin is divided into lovely slices like this. Each slice is supplied by a singular spinal nerve. And we have a series of stripes called dermatomes. How about the myotome? It's the portion of the muscle supplied by the motor nerve fiber of a single spinal nerve. Most muscles are supplied by two segments of spinal cord. Example, do you know your biceps? Yeah, I've heard of it before. It's supplied by C5 and C6. Oh, thank you. Uh, nice to know that. How about your triceps? It is supplied by C7 and C8. Most muscles are bisegmental. Few muscles are actually unisegmental or trisegmental. So biceps, C5 and C6. Notice they are two successive segments. How about triceps, C7, C8? Again, successive. Here are your lovely dermatomes. Notice that the dermatomes in the trunk are parallel to each other but transverse. Oh, but as we go to the extremities, what's gonna happen? They are parallel for the most part, but longitudinal, not transverse anymore. Why is that, Medicosis? Back to embryology. Your trunk was made first, and then your limbs start to bud out of your trunk. As they bud out, they stretch the dermatomes with them. That's why you have the longitudinal pattern in your limbs. It makes sense. But why is my trunk transverse in the first place? Because this is the same organization as the spinal cord, which is in the trunk. Transverse segments of the spinal cord. Next, an important topic known as the axial line. The axial line is where chicken come home to roost. But instead, the chicken never came home. Look at this. This is C3 dermatome, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, T1 etc. But notice what happened to C6, C7, C8, and T1. As we were trying to go back to the spinal cord, they disappeared. Oh, wow, they're not continuous in the trunk? No. And they stopped at the axial line. Why is that, medicosis? Again, it's embryology, because as your limbs started budding out of your trunk, it got elongated, and they got elongated from the axial line. So can we define the axial line? Sure. It's the line of junction of dermatomes supplied by discontinuous, not continuous, spinal segments. Next, a very crucial idea, the overlapping of dermatome. Let's suppose that this is the dermatome of T1 part of your skin supplied by T1, followed by part of your skin supplied by T2, followed by part of the skin supplied by T3. Notice there is an overlap between them. For instance, this tiny area is supplied by both T1 and T2 segments. And this tiny area is supplied by T2 and T3 spinal segments. Why should I care? Let's make it clinically relevant for you. You should care because, let's say that I had trauma that damaged my T2 spinal segment. Okay. You might imagine that I will lose sensation in all of this rectangle. Not true. The area of the actual clinical sensory loss is less than its anatomical dermatomal distribution. That was tweetable right there. Which means, lucky for me, even though I lost my T2 spinal segment, the area of the actual sensory loss is so tiny. That's good news. Bad news for you, the incompetent doctor, is that you have to be very meticulous with your physical exam. Do not just examine this point, okay, oh, the, oh, you can feel this? All right, if the patient can feel this, then therefore T1 is fine. I do not have to examine this area then. Or you just skip and went to the one upstairs. No, be very careful because sometimes they overlap, but above it there is no overlap. Which means you either have to examine the patient carefully multiple times in multiple different spots or... Use the pinprick test exactly in the center of the dermatome to make sure you hit the dermatome that you want to hit instead of actually reaching the overlap area. 
But that will take too much time. Well, do you want to arrive at a correct diagnosis or not? Or are you just going down a checklist to kiss the gluteus maximus of your employer? In that case, you're not a doctor, you're a box checker. Back to myotomes. Again, it's the portion of the muscle supplied by motor nerve fibers of a single spinal nerve and a single spinal segment. Muscles that have the same action are innervated by the same spinal cord segment. What do you mean by that? I mean flexors of the elbow, for the most part, are supplied by C5 and C6. Moreover, the opposing muscles are usually supplied by the segment that follow them. What does that mean? Extensors of the elbow are supplied by what's after 5 and 6? 7, 8. Hmm, that's interesting. So you mean that my biceps root value is C5 and C6, but the nerve supply of my triceps has a root value of C7 and 8? Exactly. Moreover, do you remember your deep tendon reflexes? The biceps reflex checks for what? C5, C6. How about the triceps reflex? C7 and 8. Oh, anatomy is just too hard and nothing makes sense. Oh, shut up. Your professor is just incompetent. But hey, medicosis, does this rule apply to the lower extremity too? Absolutely. Your body follows patterns. That's why we are able to study it. Look at for the extensors of your knee. Oh, they are supplied by the femoral nerve, L2, 3, and 4. Now let's talk about the flexors of your knees. They are supplied by the sciatic nerve. Look at that. L2, 3, 4. L4, 5, S1, 2. Oh, it actually makes sense. If you want to learn about the muscles of lower extremity and anatomy of the lower limb, check out my videos in my anatomy playlist. If you want embryology, some neurulation action, go check my embryology playlist. If you want to know about the physiology and the pathology of what happened to you in the womb, check out OBGYN High Yields course at medicosisperfectsnatus.com. You will download 10 videos, 10 PDF notes, 50 questions and answers that I call Medicosis Couch Potato, and 10 vignettes, and my favorite, a humongous PDF contains the most high yield points in OBGYN. Perfectionalis Ultimate Notebook. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.